In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode was with an introductory portion where we talk about studies, current events, we talk about our lives, we mention our sponsors. That portion of today's episode lasted about 40 minutes, then the rest was answering the fitness questions. Let me give you a rundown of this whole podcast, okay? We start out by talking about nurse slang. Justin's wife was a nurse for years, yeah. and she informed him all the slang that They're they They're secretly mean, Sal. Yeah, Code Brown. Um, I talk about uh, my post-workout meal. Actually, the guys made fun of me for my post-workout meal concoction, yeah. which included a lot of stuff, but among them was Organifi's plant protein and Organifi's green juice. I love those supplements. The protein is high-quality, dairy-free, it's vegan, um, great amino acid profile. Their green juice has uh, greens that are already freeze-dried, broken down for easy absor absorption. I love those for post-workout shakes. Because we work with Organifi and because you're a Mind Pump listener, you actually get a discount. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump. You'll get 20% off all their products. Then we talked about Amazon being investigated. Had a great debate and discussion. Ooh, got a little hot on the podcast about Amazon and what they would do in the future and what they're doing now. Is it unethical? Is it ethical? And great discussion, great debate. You'll love that part. Then I talked about a ghost that woke up a baby with a monitor. Uh oh, that's kind of crazy. Then I talked about how my wife, who Scary. is now entering into her third trimester, is using the Juve red light to help prevent the development of stretch marks. Now, red light therapy is really one of the only ways you can actually reduce the appearance of stretch marks, clinically proven. Now, the key is to use it regularly. This means you probably are going to want an at-home unit. The best company that makes the best red light units, the ones that they use in studies, the ones that actually work, is Juve. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a hookup. If you go to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V.com, You'll get a Maps Prime, a free Maps Prime program with the purchase of five hundred dollars or more, and you're gonna get free shipping. By the way, you can finance their products for zero percent APR. It's free money. Go do it. Make your skin look better. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one: How does your body type affect your way of working out? The next question: This person drinks Dr. Pepper's on the weekend. Are they better off going with diet or regular? The third question. How would we approach a family member whose health is bad? How do we get them to start working out and eating right? And the last question, this person wants to know if there's any lessons that Adam, Justin, and myself have had to learn more than once. It's funny because I think all the lessons yeah. we've had to learn more than once. A gajillion times. That's right. right. Also, before the episode starts, reminder to all of you, MAPS Strong, one of our more popular workout programs, is 50% off, half. It's half price. Now, Map Strong is excellent for building muscle strength and for work capacity, improving your recovery ability so you could do more exercises. It is a strongman-inspired program. That means you'll have conventional exercises and other unconventional strength-building exercises. It's posterior chain heavy. What does that mean? That means you're going to do a lot of back, butt, and hamstring exercises. Strong men need those muscles. The rest of us just like the way they look. Map Strong produces amazing backs, butts, and hamstrings. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com. And then use the code STRONG50. That's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0. No space for the discount. Dude, so I was talking to Courtney the other day about uh, you know, something, and something came up. Have you ever heard of the term code brown? Is that, I, is that when people shit themselves at the hospital? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, like this is like slang. Like nurses have all this slang for a uh, <laughs> certain instance. Because I think it was, we were talking about like when the kids were young and then there was this like huge explosion of poop and then had to clean. And she said, this is code brown. And, uh, do they announce it? Like, it's like a real the, thing. Do they do it through the intercom? Like, uh, we need help. In, yeah. You know, room 45, code brown. I think they do amongst each other. They, they have like names for all these different types of patients and all these different types of scenarios and things. Pretty funny. I was like looking at it 
And uh, I wanted to read a few of them just because they're interesting. One of them was called a, a chocolate hostage. <laughs> what? Can you guys guess what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with poop. But... Yeah, of course. Chocolate hostage, another term for constipation or having difficulty passing stools. So, oh, uh, yeah. so I, I get this because after because I, I remember this with- uh, Chocolate hostage. I had a family yeah. member who was in the hospital and they wouldn't let them leave until they farted or pooped. Yeah. This is a true thing. Yeah, because they got to pass, you yeah. know, get this out. Yeah, so they're they're a yeah. hostage. They're a hostage. <laughs> yeah, I, I love these. It is a yellow submarine. It's a little bit mean, actually. This is a, an obese patient with jaundice. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh wow! <laughs> they have uh, PETA, which uh, literally stands for pain in the ass. Uh, slashers and cutters, and, and they're referring to actually surgeons as they, they call them slashers and cutters. Oh, yeah. Which I thought was kind of funny. Happy juice. Uh, this is the cocktail of narcotics. Oh, okay. And then you got uh, status dramaticus. And this is patients who demonstrate their symptoms more dramatically in hopes of getting quicker medical attention. <laughs> uh, yeah. I need more Vicodin. Need it. Uh. Uh. Then you got the bungee jumper, which is it's code for a patient who keeps on pulling his uh, catheter tube. Oh. <laughs> bungee jumper. Ah. <laughs> and then uh, let's see. The, my favorite one, this will be the last one, uh, is finger painting. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is when a demented patient soils themselves and plays with it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So so you have to, I mean. So. Now, now, okay, did you play this game with Courtney where you quizzed her on a list and she could answer all of them? Oh, yeah. She has way more to add to this, too. This was just like a few of them that I found. Like, yeah, you didn't I even... was trying to remember because she went through a list of all these things. Like, they have terms for, for like everybody. It's hilarious. Dude, so slang only develops when things happen enough times yeah. where you develop sure. language around it. Sure. That's just crazy because that means that that happens a lot. Yeah, and it's like known amongst all of them. They could just like throw these terms out, and they're like, "Oh, okay, Dude, I know what I'm in for." You guys have a, ever have a code brown yourself? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I was uh, I was walking at a car show one time, oh. and uh, I I had I eaten something obviously volatile, and uh, was walking around. <laughs> And it, it was one of those where it just like hits like immediately where you just have to pinch hard and run. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it. And uh, I had to throw my underwear away. Did you really? Yeah. So you just came out? Just, you just bailed. Yeah. You, you just tossed Just them? threw them away. You, that, I mean, what else are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. No. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Super embarrassing. Yeah. That exact, almost same story happened to me where I, I now what happened to me sometimes, and uh, this is going to be a little gross, but you get that feeling and you think you could relieve a little bit of pressure by letting the the, the you know the gas out right so oh, so you do the whole mistake. you do the whole game where you try to separate the the gas from the bits you know yeah, what i mean right right and uh, let me tell you yeah. that's a hard that's a that's a risky game to play adam yeah <laughs> you, you got to have those guys at the gate you know holding <laughs> no, strong didn't happen no Nope. I, I have a, I have a, a topic I want to get into with you guys because I want to hear your opinions. This could get uh, we'll see we'll get interesting uh, how what you guys feel about this this conversation. But before we do, oh, you just finished your workout this morning, and I I, did. I come walking down the stairs, and I see you making some ridiculous concoction. What are you doing right now? Oh, yeah. You're always yeah. doing something weird uh -huh. and yeah. adding all kinds of stuff to, to shakes and drinks. He makes like elixirs. Yeah. What yeah. What, what were you making? Well, it's it's the secret of my immense muscle growth. <laughs> <laughs> Secret of the ooze. Yeah, so Remember that uh, Ninja Turtle movie? Everything. No, no, no. So I've this. I've been doing this for a long time. Okay, so I. Oh, it looked new to me. No, so poop post workout. Poop? No, post workout. Poop? I still had that in my head, right? I know. <laughs> post workout, there are a few things you could do to, you know, and this is splitting hairs. Okay, so I want the the audience to know, it's not like you do this and then you know a week you're like, whoa, this changes everything. Uh, but it does if you're if you're dialed in with everything, been training for a long time, and you like doing this kind of stuff. This can actually make a difference. So post workout, a high cholesterol meal really does help with the recovery and muscle building process. Um, your body, people don't know this, but post workout, your cholesterol levels drop because your body's literally utilizing the cholesterol for repair and rebuild. Cholesterol is also the building blocks for anabolic hormones like testosterone. In the past bodybuilders and strength athletes would, would increase their dietary cholesterol um, and they would do so with lots of chicken liver and egg yolks and they'd notice gains. So I noticed this as well. So here's what was my shake, okay? I got macadamia nut milk. I can't have dairy, otherwise it'd be regular milk. Macadamia nut milk. I put eight egg yolks, mainly because I don't want the whole egg in there because egg whites can bother me a little bit. 
So I just ate egg yolks. Ooh. Then I added, uh, to add more protein, because there's all the cholesterol, right? There's yeah. plenty of cholesterol that's, right that's there. There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot. And it's got choline too. Forgot to say that choline is very good for cognitive function, and uh, there there may be some benefits for recovery as well. And egg yolks very high in choline. Then I add protein powder because I want it to have higher protein content. And you can't have whey because your tummy. No, I don't have whey, so I do uh, or the Organifi plant protein. And the reason why I use them, besides us being sponsored, is because they they combine different forms of plant proteins, creating a better amino acid profile. So I put a scoop of that uh, in there, vanilla. Um, Then I used the Organifi green juice powder. And I throw that in there because it's got the, basically the broken down, pre-digested, freeze-dried greens that are going to add some health properties. It's got a little bit of ashwagandha in there. Ashwagandha is great for stress reduction. I had a really hard workout this morning. So I thought it'd be a good idea to offset a little bit with the green powder. And then I added Organifi's pure powder. Jesus, because <laughs> he's uh, got the whole kitchen sink in there, huh? Because uh, I, you know, I knew we we're gonna podcast later, and Organifi I wanted needs to get you a shirt, man. I, I wanted to be get you a t-shirt. How I, thick is that? That sounds, that like, sounds like a concrete like mix. Too. Was it? How did it taste? <laughs> it's, you know what? <laughs> the, a baby throw up. The 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 protein powder gives it a better flavor, yeah. and the green juice is actually pretty good. Yeah, now the green juice gives you really a good. little mint yeah. kick. Not gonna lie though, the egg yolks. They're not, I don't drink those for the taste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you guys ever go, go through so. a phase of that after watching Rocky? Did you guys ever drink oh, a lot yeah. of eggs? Yeah, 100%. I yeah. tried it, but I didn't go in a phase. Yeah. It was like a, you just I did tri- it once? Yeah, yeah. I tried it, and I was like, yeah, that's not my Oh, thing. I started with the, the glass thing with just you know the raw eggs, and then was like, oh, oh, oh would, would almost throw up every time, and then started to mix it in with this like ridiculous weight gainer 5,000 stuff with peanut butter, and it was like this explosion that would happen every time. Yeah, so I don't... So I did try the raw eggs in the glass, and it's the texture and everything is just, you know, it's terrible. Yeah. But but you can blend it. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, why don't I just blend this? What's the difference? Yeah, and I did, and I would make yeah. shakes with it, and, uh, and it would work probably really better well. that way. Yeah. So here's here's the conversation I want to get into now that we cleared up your concoction there, <laughs> <laughs> crazy weird concoction. Mm. I know there's some listeners out there that would do weird. Shit oh, like they're going to try it, of for course, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I like to hear what everybody else thinks about yeah. how that tastes. Yeah, yeah. So, did, are you guys following the recent news with Amazon? No, what's going on? They're under investigation right now. Why? So. This is what uh, they're claiming that is going on, that Amazon is using data uh, on its consumers to leverage and build competitive products. So Amazon right now has lots of third-party people that sell on Amazon, Mm -hmm. right? You know that, Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, And in fact, uh, a majority of that comes from competitors selling their products on Amazon. But Amazon has all this data to look at the everyone's buying what they're buying how much they're spending at what average cost mm-hmm. and so they can use that data to then go like oh duracell makes batteries and sells it at this cost on our and everybody and likes it for these reasons or yeah whatever. exactly for all these reasons so let's make a competitive version of that for a dollar cheaper and basic now, this is what i speculated would happen oh, with yeah. the supplement industry once amazon got into that is what is the stop them from doing, you know, getting yeah. the best uh, product of uh, that's being sold already through Amazon and competing, reverse engineering it and then selling it so for a little bit less. I'd like to know what the grounds of the investigation are. Hmm. Is it because they didn't let the competitors who are posting on there know that they would do this, or is it because they think it's so? Too- this this is where it gets interesting, and this is why why they're saying this is unfair business practices. Over 60% of Amazon's money comes from the cloud. So that's most of their their profits come right. from people- Selling storage. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. selling storage. So only a small, a small, not a small, but I mean still bajillions of dollars, okay? Mm-hmm. Is, There's is, that number again. I know. Justin. Right? <laughs> Baj- I like using it when I don't have real yeah. numbers to give people. <laughs> so many it's zeros. A, it's a lot. It makes you blind. It's, it's, it's yeah. a lot is what I'm saying, right? So they, they make a lot of money uh, you know, through the cloud, selling cloud, more of their money through selling the cloud, yeah. less money through uh, you know, uh, stuff that they sell on Amazon. Therefore, it gives them the leverage to basically take a loss Mm. On all so they virtually what they could do is anybody and everybody that pretty much sells on Amazon, uh, other third party products, right? If we had yeah. something on there, Duracell, like I use as an example, whatever, name it. They have the capability and they have so much capital and money 
to that, cannibalize your business. They could literally cannibalize everybody's business. And and yeah. that's the grounds that's, of the investigation? Yeah. That's stupid. Why? Yeah. Because that's uh, what's unfair about that. That's they they they're competing freely. There's nothing illegal there. I know. And here's the other thing. Amazon's platform is based off of the fact that I could go there. So here's what Amazon did. A lot of people don't realize they flipped the funnel upside yep. down. Yep. Yep. What used to happen uh, before Amazon got big was you wanted to find a product to buy online. You type it into Google and then you would go through and shop different sites to find the best product. Amazon did such a good job of showing you all these different products with good reviews and you trust Amazon because mm -hmm. that's the thing. Back in the day, you got on a site, like, do I trust them? Do I give my credit card? Am I going to get the product? Amazon did such a good job that almost nobody now go, or at least a very small percentage of people go on Google to search for a product. They go straight to Amazon. Yeah. So Amazon became the top of the funnel. So now that's a, that's a good thing. Obviously, consumers like this, but their platform is built on giving you so much variety I don't see it being in Amazon's best interest to eliminate all their competition because then you're going to go to Amazon and you're just going to see Amazon stuff because everyone's going to leave. Well, that's not necessarily true. I think so. No, that's not necessarily They're true. They're going to have to completely what's, change what's to the stop platform? Amazon for, from pulling a Chuck E. Cheese move? What? Okay, they having, let Dirk, having, uh, so instead of animatronic. No, 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 no <laughs> knucklehead. No, when I said, remember Chuck E. Cheese started selling pizza under a different name. What's to stop Amazon from, uh, and let's just keep staying with this Duracell analogy. Sure. What is it? To, what it's to stop them to literally reproduce, okay, reverse engineer Maxwell batteries, uh, Duracell batteries, uh, and brand it under something else besides Amazon, so it just looks like a competitor company that's well, pro that's providing superior uh, yeah. product. Will never happen. I'll tell you why it won't happen. It, it, because we've already had how many decades of open markets and dominant forces or dominant competitors, and they never do that. That's, it doesn't no, work. Wrong, though. This is a, we are in a, here, and I'm playing devil's advocate. Well, give me an not example. We, we are in a situation with somebody who has way more money and the ability to do that. Okay, give me another an example. Company couldn't, another company would have to risk so much more to take that chance to beat out a competitor, to undercut, take a loss. Companies do that all the time. There's, that happens a lot, but no one has had as much power as Amazon to do that in this position. They have that power over probably thousands, how many companies th or yeah. third party companies are there? Well, I, I just look at what they've already sort of uh, disrupted. They they actually have. Have you guys seen their version of like QVC? So it, it's like a prime. It's like that that same format where you're on TV and you're selling those products. Right. Like literally, they're going to take over that market. Okay, right? they they took over look, the. So what the, is your this, thought? This packaging has, of uh, this has never happened. This is the common. That doesn't mean that it can't. The, okay. Okay, yes, in theoretical land. But here's the thing. Okay, markets have been around for a long time. We've had oil companies that have dominated, yet there's still other oil companies. We've had uh, entertainment companies that have dominated. We still have lots of it. We've had clothing companies. We've had food manufacturers. We've had car companies. There's always competition. The whole monopoly, uh oh, watch out for this competitor that's so powerful that they're going to monopolize the market, never happens unless the following happens. Government comes in and creates large barriers for competitors to enter the market. Okay, so so you're you're partially correct. Well, you're, historically, you're, I'm 100 yeah, exactly correct. historically, but that doesn't mean that we haven't seen. You know, there was a time when we never seen a rocket go to a moon. Doesn't mean something can't happen. It's not bro. the same. It, I mean, yes, it is. It's it, innovation. You're, we are That's, seeing we are seeing Amazon do something that no one's ever done. God damn, you said this the other day. If you made one hundred eighty thousand dollars a day from the day that Jesus Christ died to today, you still would have less money than Jeff Bezos. So the 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 position that now listen, I'm not saying that that's an unfair thing. The guy created something that so many people love that he's made a ton of money. I'm not saying that that's not fair. What I'm saying is it's very possible to do exactly what I'm saying. Okay, his, it is very possible for for if he's making billions on billions of dollars through selling the cloud so he's got this secure place of, of income that protects him to then go into this other the other side of their business and undercut every single person to put them out of business okay never will happen okay historically why okay. no no no. okay you cannot i'm not going to let you use history as a explanation what? of why something can't happen in the future well, economically it's, it's the only evidence that we have there is no evidence to what you're saying what you're saying is purely theoretical has never happened right but your 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 way to refute that is just well, because of history it let hasn't me go, happened let before? me go well let me go further that would okay. be like someone arguing with me before the moon okay. and saying that sorry can't happen we've let, never done that let me go further okay i'll go further so jeff bezos a lot of money amazon a lot of money okay if you if you Count if you look at it in comparison to GDP, in comparison to 
their competitors in comparison to inflation. He has less money than the tycoons of the past. He has less power than the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers and Ford well, okay, in the past. No, okay, challenge that. No, not necessarily. They may have had more capital or more money compared to their time, but the the control that he has because of the platform. That's he's not made. true. Rockefeller had railroads uh, under control. He he created oil, and he and what he did is drop the price of oil to the point where the government was like, uh oh, no one can compete. The reality is there still were competitors. Look now, did how much does Amazon dominate the market? I guarantee it's not ninety nine percent. Guarantee it's a lot less than that. And also look at it this way: today. The barriers to do anything in the market are way lower. If you want to start a business and sell your products online today, it's it's infinitely easier than it was before Amazon existed or before the internet existed. We had to have capital to do a business or look at media. Look what happened with media. Do we have media giants? We absolutely do. And what's happening? You're seeing more competition. Well, so now, I, if the problem is that Amazon lies to mm -hmm. the people who are posting on their who, who, to their their vendors, well, I think that's part of the part that's of the, different. All, part all of, of it's good for the consumer. At the end of the day, it's just totally. a matter of agreed. Like, agreed on that. Yeah, agreed it, that this is better for the consumer, no yeah. matter what. And yeah. here's the thing: if that theoretical thing happens, which it won't, but if it does, all right, then we step in. But the problem the here, well, here's what they do: they create this fear. This is what government does, right? They they see a power emerging. Uh oh, we don't like that, especially because we're not collecting as much money as we want. So what they do is they create this. This is the same. By the way, this is the same narrative that's been said forever, ever since uh, markets really started becoming uh, effective, especially in the Western world, America and the in, in the UK and and, for, and all those Western nations. This is the same narrative that, the narrative that they always push. And so here's what happens: you see a company explode, then you say, "Oh my gosh, they're going to start taking over everything." Here's what we need to do. We need to create re regulations, laws, and barriers. Reality is, they start to partner with these companies and make them become more powerful. Well, I don't think I, I don't think I necessarily challenge uh, what you're saying in that in that case. I'm just saying that I think you're wrong that by saying that it can't happen. I think it absolutely can. Now, am I saying that that's unfair and that we should we should govern and not allow it? I'm not saying that either. Hmm. I'm I'm just an advocate for the free market as you are. So let the market dictate it. But what I am saying is this could potentially fucking train wreck th tens of thousands of companies. Hmm. Well, and 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 for you to, to debate that that's not possible with with the, with the power that they have and the capabilities they have, I think is absurd. No, I didn't debate that they won't. Uh, yes, you did. You said that would not happen. What's were your not exact gonna, words? No, what's not going to happen is they're not going to uh, monopolize everything and. Uh, eliminate all competition. Now, are they going to force uh, companies to figure out ways to compete? Absolutely. Amazon has already put other companies out of business, okay? right. just like Barnes & Nobles did with bookstores, whatever. But they also uh, simultaneously created far, far, far more opportunities. Uber ba basically destroyed the taxi business, but they opened up far more opportunities. Mm. Uh, Netflix destroyed the rental market. And this, these are all points I'm not debating with right. you. I'm yeah. not debating. You're just that. saying that they that they could they could grow they, and become even more. Yeah, they could. I, what I'm saying is they could. B businesses need to be aware yeah, of that. Exactly. That, that, my point is, thing. if you're selling on Amazon yeah. and 80 percent of your revenue goes through a Amazon and you're making millions of dollars and you're over there high fiving each other and jerking each other off, you better wake <laughs> yeah. up. You better wake it's, up. It's the same concern I had. Like so, back in the day, presenting in front of a company like Apple and like people don't talk about this, but anytime you have a patented product or if it's like slightly patented, you're presenting it to a, a mega company, they're going to fucking just deconstruct it and find ways around your patent and do it if they find that it's successful. I, but so you just got to be aware of that and, and know that like, okay, well, how long is it going to take me to get to market? Am I okay yeah. with, you know, uh, having Remember competition? Remember what I said about supplements like three years ago and Amazon. Like I, I, I said that the reason why I would never want to get into supplement space is because I literally think that Amazon just doesn't give a shit about it right now. Because it's it's still what in the hundreds of millions, or yeah. is it in the maybe a couple billion, which is for Amazon, it's small po potatoes, yeah, pocket change, right? For yeah. them, they're trying to they're trying to change you know transportation and mm -hmm. mail and like things like that. They're trying to make huge leaps in areas that we haven't in decades. 
they're like supplement industry that kind of blown up in the last two decades. Let's see if it's around 10 more years and if it's growed 4X, mm-hmm. then we'll go in and just wipe everybody clean because they literally have that power. What mm-hmm. is to stop yeah. them right now since probably a majority of people do sell their supplements through Amazon? We know yeah. they do. And it's interesting now because brand loyalty isn't as a powerful Hell no. a thing reviews. anymore. Reviews. Yeah. Reviews. Reviews. Awesome. And, and that's it, what they created. And you yeah. have and you control that right now. That's yeah. a very powerful place to be. It is, but again, do we have more or less supplement companies today? Right. Do we have more people putting out music or less people putting out music than before? By the way, the music industry, yeah. completely different than it used to be. And the whole fear was, oh my God, they're going to destroy the industry. That's so. What's happened is we have more music. Do we have you know more or less pretty much most products that well, we did my, 15, my, 20 my, years ago. My, my conversation to the music industry would have been the same one I'm having right now, too. It wouldn't be that I disagree with the disruption of it. I mean, we're disruptors in our space. So mm. We're pro that, but it's more to put everybody on notice. Like, yeah, be, I, and be, I, like be careful if you, if you yeah. are making a tremendous amount of money through Amazon and you're content with that right now because that very much so could bite you in the ass by what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Now, my the the, the one thing I could see them getting in trouble for is, is uh, would be lying or not disclosing that. So mm-hmm. what they're doing is they're allowing people. It's, I think to they did, I think they didn't disclose it. That's so that's the, that's a problem. Now that's you, that you have if you sign a contract, you got to be honest. Here's what's happening. Here's what I'm doing with your information. That I'm a hundred percent behind. Uh, you know that. But if they do disclose it and they do tell you, hey, this is something we can do, and you're on there and they do it, then I imagine yeah. I would imagine. I see. I've never sold on Amazon like this, but I would imagine that just like Facebook or Instagram, you have it's in the a, small print. Yeah, I, I imagine there's a <laughs> oh, disclaimer yeah. that you are releasing your data and information so Amazon could well, better serve its well, customers. If it's on or, our platform, we can use yeah, it. Well, yeah. dude, before you, before Amazon, or and bef- definitely before the internet, but definitely before. For also Amazon, if you wanted to start a supplement company, I was ve- I'm very very uh, aware of this industry. This is something that I've loved, and I want to start a supplement company. I want to start a GNC. If you wanted to start a supplement company, good luck. You either were had to be a famous bodybuilder, an yeah. actor, or be you know somebody that was in all the publications. Otherwise, a brand new supplement that comes out. Nobody's going to give a shit about. Nobody's going to want to buy. You're going to have to get the GNCs to carry it. You're going to have to get go to the fitness conventions. Who's going to pay attention to me if I'm not a pro? Yeah, your argument is it's just different hurdles. Now today. with Amazon, do you know how many new supplement companies have started and have made it to seven and eight figures because they're posting good content? Amazon has the review system, which gives companies. Uh, the ability to yeah, like, but you could also look at that as like letting the wolf in the hen house too. Maybe you know what I'm saying like <laughs> yeah. sure, come on in, everybody, come on in, yeah. come on in. Like oh, you could build more businesses that so now we have more opportunity well, to wipe well, out. Well, look at the music industry, right? What yeah. you had before were these mega, mega superstar, super wealthy uh, uh, musicians who had a record label, label, and the only way to get their the, the, your favorite song was to buy the album, and you did, and it was expensive. And now you have where you could buy music for ninety nine cents. Sometimes you can get it. Yeah. For free. So what did that do? Well, that that the the mega wealthy musician that's just selling records, that's going to drop. But you're going to have a lot more millionaire musicians who are going to have like a million fans or five hundred thousand fans. Right, right, right. And you're also going to see these musicians. You've already seen this now pushing more t- for concerts yeah. and in person. Something that you, you oh can't- they have to sell merch. I mean, it's it's a thing they have yeah. to do now. Yeah. So so, do, so do, I mean, do you ever think that it, there's ever a reason for government to step in and not allow a, a company like Amazon to gain too much power? Uh, uh, not unless they're doing if they're lying. Right. Right. Stealing. Say they're every, everything's up on the up and up. Oh no. You know I'm saying I'm sure. And I'm sure they were. I'm sure you signed away your your data and information when you got on there. And they, uh, I think, legally, Amazon will probably win this battle, and they will have the ability to do those things. And is that okay? At what point does a company get more powerful than government? It's uh, well, what, when it, when it can control a, a a large portion of our economy and dictate things. It's already that's already. I mean, here, okay, we're, this is an, an, another path, but yeah. you know, when when Facebook's gone through that in other countries. Well, already. when when the government plays an active role in the market, there's a very very strong incentive for companies to lobby and to influence government. That's where we're at now. That's why that's why political elections are billions of dollars. It's because companies know the government plays an active role. It makes sense for them to try to lobby, to influence. So that's already happening. But at the end of the day, the one with the guns is the government. It's not the companies. And so that's the big thing. But the reality is they partner. 
I mean, let's be honest. They partner with each other, and what what big business does is it says, "I'll help you get elected Which if is, you if you pass these laws that make it hard for people to right, compete." Crony with me. capital, yeah, that's yes. like the worst, right? And that's the absolute worst. It's the unholy alliance of uh, you know big business and, and and government. But if it was just straight market, uh, and a company got really really powerful. That would only be because the consumers allowed that to happen. You know, you're the ones that we're the ones that say. I know, like I, I don't, and I don't disagree with you. And it, yeah. it still opens the opportunity for someone else to come in and create a better version of Amazon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're seeing that over in what South Korea right now. I think is where I brought that up before. Oh, really? Yeah, that they're building a platform that's you know that's supposed to. Remember, I brought this up on the podcast. I, I think I brought it up. And it was in my notes to talk about it. Was there's a company I believe in South Korea, Doug, where uh, and I forget the name of it, but they're basically Amazon's competitor, and they're they're big push to uh, beat out Amazon in their country is that they guarantee if you order before midnight, your package will be on your door by 7 a.m. the next day. Holy cow. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, they're a, a, a tiny country, so they yeah. can, you know what I'm saying? Manage that. They can manage logistics. that a lot easier than Amazon worldwide trying to compete with that. You know, so, Walmart. Uh, but that's an example of, of yeah. what you're talking about right now. Like, they, they can do that within their country. And if you're in South Korea, you may choose that company over Amazon yeah. because they can provide a better service, right? So Walmart can compete, I think, if they want, you know, because they have so many locations locations so they have the ability to deliver very quickly they have a lot of money they're very very you know uh, successful business i know that they have their own cloud or they're building their own cloud to compete so i think walmart could potentially be are they so that's so that was always the argument i heard from uh you know execs that work for amazon why amazon will always dominate is because they the own, they own all the cloud yeah. and no matter what even if you build a competing business with them, you will They'll need- They'll service the cloud. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they will they will still traffic all that money yeah. through their cloud, and they that's where they'll make most Dude. of their profit anyway. So, so it's, it's, like, it's like they they got both ends of the yeah. funnel. Hey, yeah. speaking of technology, I wanted to ask you, Adam, uh, because uh, you know we, I have a baby coming in a few months, and baby monitors have changed since I had my kids. Yeah, yeah. I used to have them where you just listen to them. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. it's like a camera. Yeah, you watch you, everything. You now. could look through the camera and look at the temperature of the baby- you could, you know, move the camera around. It's got kind of night vision. It, yeah. You could talk. It's like ridiculous. It's insane <laughs> surveillance. But um, I was reading this article, so I want to ask you if this happened to you, where people's cameras were picking up other conversations or they're picking up weird things. Like there was one family who thought there was a ghost because they saw this image <laughs> pass through the room and the baby woke up. And I'm wondering if it was just interference. Did you get? Have you heard or seen anything so we, weird? I, I've had interference. Yeah, you, maybe Spectres. once, once or twice. I think. I mean, it's all. Think about it. It's all Bluetooth connectability. So if there, if there's a house, and I live in a townhouse, right? So if there's another house nearby that has a, a Nanit camera, which I'm sure that I mean, there's got to be. I know there's a baby right across the way from me, <laughs> so I'm sure. So you're some person talking, right? Right. So I'm sure it's like we've had, but it hasn't been that clear where I'm like listening to someone else's conversation, like it's like a second. Dude, I think that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I so interesting. You bring this up. This is actually a conversation that I've never brought up on the podcast that uh, I I have with Katrina all the time. So like you. Um, you know, I, I was helping raise my little brother and sister who were, who were 13 years younger than, uh, than me. So when I was, you know, 12, 13 through, you know, 18 years old, I was raising these guys. And back then baby monitors were just sound. That's mm-hmm. all you had. It was just this yeah, yeah. sound that was, you know, and you only heard when they cried. And that was just what, it, and that was like incredible technology, right? Yeah. Before that time, like you just had to w- listen to hear if you hear your baby crying, right? So that what it has done though, and I just I I don't do this. Katrina does. I mean, Katrina obsessively watches him. Oh yeah, obsessively. And uh, to her, it's it. She is. I mean, this is her first kid. Her experience, first time ex- raising something that this technology is already around. She doesn't know what it's like to have a baby monitor that only you can hear sound. And for her, it's like. It's the ultimate safety. Like she can see him at all times. I mean, he moves and you we get a notification. Yeah, like it, can, it'll picks up movement. Yeah, right away. It moves right away. And it tracks all his like his time he was sleeping, if he wrestled or if he moved around. I think at some all. of them will even look at heart rate. Oh yeah, breathing. I have all that. I have the heart rate, the temperature in the room, the temperature of him. Oh, like yeah. Dude, everything. That, that I can would just make me paranoid. I can, oh, that's I don't I, I don't watch it. Yeah. I don't watch it. I mean it's I, too much. Like every once like I, we're here right now, right? So I'll admit this. And like, you can pull it up on your phone? Yeah, I can watch it right now. So I we can watch and I can communicate to him right now. 
So I, I do that. Like we're away right now, so I miss him, right? So uh, and I'll see activity, it, movement, and mm-hmm. so I'll look on it, and sometimes I'll talk to him because he I can do that. That's so interesting. So, so that's so- cool. There's cool features about it, but then there's also the obsessive part where I've joked about. I think off air to you guys about like you know Katrina trying to have sex with me while she's holding the fucking camera. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm just like, hey, this is not working for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I know uh, mom's got to get hers right now and stuff like that, but could you at least put my son up on the dresser for like 15 minutes here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. But she is. She's like, well, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to not hear him if he starts crying. I'm like, oh, he'll be fine for 15 minutes. Give me a break. Well, here. you know what it makes? It's like, it's just, it's starting at the, as soon as they're born and it just continues because then the kids have cell phones. So my son goes somewhere and I'm like, hey, text me when you get there. Text me when this happens. If I call, I expect you to answer the phone. And I, I catch myself with that because I wonder yeah. what that creates in the kid, this dependency or yeah. this like they to lose independence. Because when I was a kid, you went out to play, you were out. You yeah, were gone. It'll, I can already tell in our relationship, it'll be me challenging that all the time of me just let him go. Let mm-hmm. him go figure it out, you know? Mm-hmm. Just be back by the sun, you know? I, I'll be that dad, <laughs> and she'll be the one like, every hour I want a text message, and I can see that that- Oh, I could see, like, you're looking at your phone, and your kid is out, and you're like, um, you know, oh, my daughter's heart rate's going up. What's happening at the party? Yeah. Hey, honey, why is Dude. your heart rate going up? Well, yeah. you know I mean? This parallels what I've, I, I was thinking about this in terms of, like, you know, the state of our world. Are we really, like, is it that much more crazy than it's always been, or is it just the fact that like these incidents that happen in a city that's like way across the country or, you know, like these these pop ups of eruptions that normally we wouldn't even have known about unless you're in local news. Oh, for totally. Sure. It's, it's just it's just bombarded. And now all of a sudden you're just creating all this like excess amount of anxiety Dude, and stress that, over everybody else's problems. That's it, because the numbers prove it. The numbers prove it that that today is the safest time to be alive, if, especially if you're a kid. Yeah, you know, kidnappings were higher when we were kids. Uh, violence, murder, everything was worse when we were kids. Things are significantly better, so it's a hundred percent that. I remember there was a there was this. I don't know if it was an Instagram page or it was like a social media page somewhere where it was uh, teenagers or kids uh, posting videos of their friends getting like so drunk that they'd collapse or throw up or whatever and they'd make fun of it and i remember parents were like oh my gosh i can't believe this is and they were all freaking out yeah. and it made me think to myself gosh if if there was a camera around me oh, yeah. all the time <laughs> yeah. when i was like 15 16 17 yeah you know the stuff that would could have got caught i mean i didn't want to say on the plane teenagers do some stupid shit and yeah. you know luckily nobody had a camera yeah you know, luckily nobody was able to film. It's all yeah. captured now. It's all yeah. captured. You yeah. know, so you're it'd be interesting what it's going. To, I mean, I think that's it's going to be the responsibility of parents to to pay attention to that mm. and and to understand the value of uh, allowing the kid to create independence and and probably the detriments of what happens if you hover over them too much and you, we you will have to actively do, as parents it'll be your responsibility to. Uh, be self-aware of when you're doing that too much. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Like I, and you now lucky for me, I have a partner who I think is extremely self-aware that, you know, I, 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 don't, I give her a little bit of shit and I gave her a little shit on the podcast just now about her obsessively watching it. But at the same time too, she looks at me and she's just, I mean, she's in love with her son and adores him and she's just watching. It's natural. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, there's a part of me that, and I get it. I'm away right now. Uh, last night we all, you know, left each other and went to bed. I went to bed and watched my son sleep. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like for about 10 minutes, just looking at him. Like, so, you know, I can't get, she just, she, I, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'll, and I think that as, as he starts to get older and it becomes more important that he has more independence, mm-hmm. I think that she's self-aware enough to catch herself if she's, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's going to become a discipline of like l- allowing them to develop and, and figure things out themselves without like yeah. ah, getting your fingers in there, you know, and, and you know, like influencing. Yeah, there was much. one more question I want to ask you, um, Adam, when Katrina was pregnant, because mm-hmm. um, one of the, one of the issues, one of the fears uh, that, you know, and I think it's common with women as they have, as they go through pregnancy one of the fears that Jessica has is has to do with stretch marks, stretch marks that are going to happen because obviously you're growing so quickly and all that stuff. It's very oh, common. Yeah. Did Katrina use the 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 Juve light during pregnancy or post pregnancy for stretch marks? Katrina was religious about not only the Juve light, but she did the whole. And I know there's like. Uh, people that uh, agree and disagree with the whole like cocoa butter thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. She Courtney did, was on that too. She did. She did all. Every, like 
every night, every time she was out of the bath. So probably two, three times a day, she was doing that. She was hitting the juve at least one or two times a day for 10 minutes at a time. So she, that was like, uh, I never really said anything to her. It was like her thing that I, I could tell that she did not want to have like these massive stretch marks and she wanted to do whatever. And part of that also was uh, managing her diet. Like Katrina was very dialed mm. with her nutrition. So she didn't want to put on any more extra weight than she needed, right? She wanted to carry enough weight for the baby to be healthy and eat what the baby needed to. But she was very disciplined not to go off. Like Katrina did not go through a dessert kick and over consuming and adding an extra mm. 15 pounds that she didn't need for the baby's health on her and in addition to that doing the cocoa butters like crazy doing the juve light like crazy and she is nothing you well know? yeah so because because when you research uh stretch marks there's no research to support the creams and the lotions and right. the oils uh in fact they say it won't do anything it's all genetic but the red light therapy does have uh good evidence it's got actual studies done showing that it uh reduces the appearance of stretch marks once you have them but also, it could prevent well, this stretch is what, marks so or I make like them the less. Discoloration that's how that she shit. started. Was yeah. I saw her doing the cocoa butter thing, and I didn't want to like completely shit on it and be like, "Hey, uh, there's no real research that says that." Like, so I was just so instead I said, "Like, hey, if you're really trying to do that, there's actually some really good research to support. We have a damn juve light in the guest room. Use it." And once I told her that, it was like game on. Yeah, you know? yeah, because so you consistent look with it. you look into it, and I mean, you have to use it consistently. So you know, I know they have them in salons and stuff, but the the, the truth is, when you look at the studies people use them consistently mm -hmm. you know on a weekly basis at the very least um and for you know uh, over over a period of time so it's not like you use it once or twice and then boom you're gonna it has to be done over time mm -hmm. but the studies are, are conclusive it does it's one of the very few things that can help uh with stretch marks so that's what that's what i have jessica on i wasn't asking i wanted to ask you what your you know what your guys experience was so first question is from mostafison how does body type affect your way of working out? Should a person consider a specific amount of weight or training methods if they have a mesomorph, ectomorph, or endomorph body type? I think this question is because have you guys seen a lot of? I've seen a ton of Instagram ads around this right yeah. now. Hmm. Like yeah, like it's it's become really a, a popular angle is to market to people by their their somatotypes, mm -hmm. you know, ectomorph, mm -hmm. endomorph, mesomorph, and say that, oh, if your body type is like this, you should be eating and training this way uh, and, and, and not like this. And that could be the reason why you're not getting results. Yeah. It's a, I've it's, seen the, have you seen the one, the, the, the female version where they have pear, they have like, yes. there's almost like 15 different versions. They're trying to narrow it down for them. This is such a, and this is marketing 101. Uh, so people oh, totally. get this, like the, you're hitting a major pain point. Um, everybody, uh, in including myself, right? Like, uh, I, I want to believe that even if there is some truth to it, I want to believe that it's much harder for me to build muscle than it is Justin. Mm. Yeah. Ju Justin is, is at a much higher advantage than me to build muscle He's because definitely of, thick. Yeah. <laughs> because his, his bone Three structure in, and you know, so he has that advantage. And the reason why I'm not more buff is because of that, because of my body type, and maybe that's why, because I've, I've been not eating correctly for my mm -hmm. body type and my training. So that's a, it's a major pain point for a lot of people. So it's a, it's a great way to market, but that's really all, all the real weight to it. It's the, there's not a lot of uh, truth to this. Yeah. This reminds mm -hmm. me of, uh, do you guys remember when they had the whole, are you a pear? Are you an apple? If you're this, then you need yeah. to eat this way. They're still whatever. marketing like that. Yeah. So, okay. So those, those somatotypes were created in the 1940s. It was a psychologist. William Herbert Sheldon, I think is his mm. name, who came up with this. And it was he was trying to be like, use like taxonomy, right? Taxonomy is classifying animals. And so he said, oh, we can classify humans into yeah. these three categories. It's been widely- Isn't it rooted in eugenics? Yeah, well, sometimes, yeah. yeah. He didn't necessarily. Not I don't know him, much about it. I know him. somebody that it, yeah, tied okay. it into that. But this is, it, it, it's been widely debunked because most people don't fit neatly into any of those categories. Most people are a combination of a lot of those things. Now, here's my opinion on training your body for for its class of, you know, how it is as a body type or whatever. At the end of the day, there's something that trumps that by far, which is your own individual self, okay? What you don't want to do is fall into a pattern of, I, have, I train this way because I look like this or because my body shape is this way. And then you ignore... Your own body's individual signals. When I train clients one-on-one, -on -one, 
I, you know, just looking at them, I never developed a routine based off just looking at them. Mm -hmm. My routine was based off of how their body responded, how they moved, Mm -hmm. their own lifestyle. All that trumped it. Even even male and female. Here's the deal. Like, uh, there are clearly two biological categories of male and female sex. Um, And generally speaking, there are differences between men and women. Everything from hormones to fat distribution to, you know, lots of things I can generally say about men and women. But I still don't say men train this way, women train this way, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, it's all individual. Yeah. It's all based on the individual. It would so, be nice if it was that simple. It would. And, it, and that's I think that's the you know, the key factor is that people want something that's so straightforward, so simple, and it's going to work for them right away. And so they're looking for that. And so marketers know that. And so they want, they know how to basically present that in front of you. Like, this is the answer that I was looking for. And it's speaking to me because I, I do fit within this uh, description and this type of body type mm-hmm. and all these things. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot more education that needs to happen in self yep. uh, responsibility and, and understanding of of you know like your body signals all these different factors and genetic factors that you're bringing into working out yeah I, I would say that here's the most important things if you want to you know base your workout and diet off of information um, number one your goal number two your lifestyle number three uh, you know how you feel during the workouts your behaviors what you enjoy to do those are the most important things those are the most important things and I'll give you an example of that right I could we could do some crazy analysis of an individual. I could do all kinds of biometric readings and biology, and we could test your gut flora and do all this. And I could say to you, hey, uh, Steve, we did all this complicated, took you know $50,000 worth of tests or whatever. Based off of our research, the most effective form of cardio for you is going to be to wake up at 5.15 a.m. and go swim in a cold lake. Now, if Steve hates that, right. never wants to do it, guess what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't right. yeah, work. Be, because we're looking at long-term success. It, right. None of that matters, right? So th- so that's why it's important to consider not, what I- Not what, only that, but there is there is even a massive variance day-to-day and week-to-week. True. Yeah. So you know maybe that's perfect for Steve tomorrow, mm-hmm. but then Steve uh, gets bad news at work, uh, gets terrible Steve sleep the goes next on day. drinking binge. And, that's, yeah. and here's the truth. You know, Justin said it would be nice, but it would be awful for us. We would eliminate our jobs. <laughs> I mean, that would be- Oh, we just pump out like like a very specific, you know, PDS. Yeah. Like here. Yeah, yeah but then, there it would you be, go. then it would be done, right? Yeah, it's be done. done There'd be done. no reason to have conversations like this afterwards, right? Because it would be that specific. It's like, oh, here's your body type. Here's what you're supposed to be eating. Here's how you're supposed to be training. There yeah. you go. Go follow just it. Just spits it out of a machine. Well, yeah, we'd be done, right? And, and many people could duplicate it. But really, what that's what makes a great coach. A great coach uh, is is able to adjust on the fly like that. Is to is to know to ask the right questions from the co- client to get the proper feedback to then make the best educated guess. Mm-hmm. And I say guess because we always are kind of guessing. Yeah, we don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know uh, physiologic physiologically go, what's going on in everybody's body at every moment. And there's so many. That's what makes us so unique and beautiful. Is there's so many things that are happening moment to moment that it, it, you can never just categorize a, a type of person or people in a group that this is how they should eat, this is how they should train, this is how they should sleep. Nah, it just doesn't work that way. The best we can do as coaches is to help educate and inform the listener or the client as much as possible so they can learn to read some of these signals and make the best educated And this guess. is why experience is so important. After you work oh, with yeah. people years and years and years, you start to see right. patterns and your guesses get closer and better um, and more accurate. Next question is from Coach Dad CT. I don't drink alcohol, but my thing is Dr. Pepper. If I have three to five cans on the weekend, am I better off with the natural sugar and calories in the regular one? Or the diet one with artificial sweeteners. Yeah. I, I like this question because um, I think it was Sal who got me to kind of really uh, reevaluate uh, this. I, I think I've openly admitted on this podcast that I've, I've had this like diet coke thing, and I still occasionally have these. Now it's like you know once once a month or once every other month uh, one finds its way in there. For I'm enjoying like the other you know the other day we had In and Out Burger and I like a diet coke with my In and Out Burger and I'm there right. I don't have my Hanson uh, uh, natural sugar option while I'm there. So what what I've done though is to eliminate pretty much drinking diet cokes completely. Is you know just say hey I'm gonna have and Hanson is a is a product that I really like. It's a brand that I we're not sponsored by them or anything, but they're they have natural sugar and the calories are still 
pretty minimal. I think it's 130 calories or so for the for the drink. And what I've noticed is that instead of uh, drinking Diet Cokes and saying, oh, it's zero calories, so allowing myself the freedom to have it every day or twice a day, uh, saying, you know what, I'm going to make the choice of having something with sugar and knowing that it has 130 calories, I tend to make a better choice. Plus, I notice uh, uh, the way I uh, uh, retain water in my gut. So when I'm when I'm doing diet cokes, it, I definitely get this kind of like inflammation, mm. and I definitely feel like a, I'm I'm holding water, especially in my gut. And when I do natural real sugars, I don't get that. Now it could also be because when I drink a natural sugar drink, I tend to have one, and I have one maybe every other day. If I have diet cokes, I could watch myself go from one every other day to one a day to then even allowing myself to have two in a day really quickly. And maybe it's the overconsumption mm. of it that is causing that. Yeah, we the the problem with this discussion is always uh, that we don't consider the, the the total context. Okay, so is it better to eat to have the sugar drink or the artificial sweetened drink? I don't know. I need to still look at the rest of your life. I need to look at your behaviors. Here's the main challenges that I see with artificially flavored drinks. Now, forget the whole debate about whether or not the artificial sweeteners are healthy or bad uh, for you. I'm gonna let's just assume that there's no risk with them. I, although I think that's baloney. Let's just assume no risk. It just makes your drink taste sweet, and so there's le- no calories in it. Studies show consistently that when people include artificially flavored drinks into their diet or replace sugar drinks with it, and they're left to their own devices, they don't lose any weight. Now, why is that? Is it because the artificially flavored drinks cause them to gain weight? No. It's because they make up for it by eating other food. Behaviorally speaking, it doesn't cause weight loss. Now, if you track everything perfectly, and then you cut out sugar and replace it with artificial sweeteners, you'll lose weight because you're going from calories to to no calories. But here's the behavior issues I see with artificially flavored drinks. This is what Adam uh, is talking about. Drinks that have calories and sugar, those have a natural barrier. What I mean by that is there's something that people tend to consider when they drink those sodas. There's a consequence. It's on the can. 130 calories, 30 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. That's my consequence. People's behaviors, when they do that, especially health-conscious people, they tend to limit the drinks or have a few, and that's it. When you have a can of soda that has zero calories, you've eliminated the the perception of the consequence. So then you just start to drink the shit out of it. Now, what's yeah. what's bad with that? Well, we know that it doesn't reduce your food intake. You end up making up for it. It definitely throws off how you perceive food. So now things that are sweet, naturally, don't taste nearly as sweet. Compare a Diet Coke to a regular Coke, and a Diet Coke it's is sweeter. much sweeter. That, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. And if I get in a pattern of drinking even something like that has like a stevia or something that I consider to be like a better option in terms of, you know, a sweetener, uh, just like they make up for the fact that the calories aren't in there by, you know, really turning up that, that, that sweetness. So your body kind of responds like, Ooh, it's nice. But then that affects the decisions I make later on in terms of like what I'm craving or what, you know, might find its way into my, uh, into my food and like having desserts and things like that. Like it's just my, my, palate starts to then kind of crave that sweetness in other directions this is exactly what i found Mm -hmm. what i and this is this is the read like someone's probably listening going like oh well how can't you why can't you discipline yourself to have the the one diet coke every other day or few days the same way you do with the hansen and that is why is because what ends up happening is i have this you know artificial sweetened drink that is like super powered tasting sugar and changes my palate now, when I have a handful of grapes or I bite into an apple, I don't get that same satisfaction. It's not as rewarding. It's not. And so I don't get that, the, that same pleasure signal for, in my brain as I was getting from that Diet Coke. So then it makes me want more of them. Mm-hmm. And so I keep chasing that. And so yeah. I've, and I really didn't test that, this, this behavior like this until we had brought this up on the podcast. The way I kind of looked at it was like, ah, you know, I'm very aware of my behaviors. If I start to see myself go from, the Diet Coke occasionally, to the Diet Coke every other day, to the Diet Coke every day. Then all of a sudden I allow myself, and it's always like if I caught myself doing two Diet Cokes in a day, I know I've I've worked my way up. And that's always was my like, okay, time to pull off, and I'm really good about doing that. But I never really thought, oh, what if I just allow myself to have a sugar drink when I want it? 
And will it be easier for me? And you brought that up uh, when this discussion came up before, and I actually applied that, and it's been unbelievable. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't feel I I need the diet cokes, or I don't get caught up in that. When I have a Hanson uh, drink of that, and I tell you what, uh, another reason why I wanted to bring this this question up is because I had been on ser- I've been in search of an, a, a brand like Hanson that I really like, and I found one that's even healthier and even better and has even more flavors that I like that I cannot wait to introduce to our audience because we, and we've been going back and forth for a few months oh, now. Oh, those are the ones that we tried? Yes. Yeah, those and are, so those are really that's good. getting sealed up right now. So we have a new partner in that space that I'm super pumped about uh, because this definitely, this is a brand that really speaks to me because that has been a, a long time battle for me is always wanting to go revert back to Diet Cokes. And I feel like this is something yeah. that's going to completely eliminate that. Yeah, one of the problem, the big problem that we do in the fitness space is we look at all everything from a mechanistic point of view. Oh, mm. low, no calories, therefore it's okay. But yeah. we don't look Fair at game. The, we don't look at the big picture. Look, artificial sweeteners uh, have existed now for decades, um, and we we still have obesity. Uh, it hasn't solved anything. So what what happens? Well, it, it actually encourages, tends to encourage, I should say, um, a bad relationship with food. Here's a good relationship with food. I want something sweet. Okay, there's some calories in it. That's okay because right now I think I'll enjoy this. A bad relationship with food is consequence-free pleasure-seeking. Okay, apply that to anything else in your life. Consequence-free pleasure-seeking. There's always a consequence. You think there's no consequence, but there's always a consequence. And your body does become desensitized when you do this often, this is with everything. This could happen with anything that gives you pleasure. Sex does the same thing. You can desensitize yourself to the point where what might get you in the mood no longer gets you in the mood because you've been insens- desensitized because you've exposed yourself to too much, you know, whatever. Um, same thing with food. So, look, I've been training people. We've all been training people for a long time. I've never seen somebody fix their nutrition issues by replacing sugar with artificial sweeteners. In my experience, it's never, not only is it not fixed, it usually causes more problems. Next question is from Ty Finicum. How would you, or would you even, approach a friend or family member when you can clearly see their health declining or weight getting out of hand? If they are amenable to help, where would you start? You know, this, uh, this is a question that we get all the time. Yeah, yeah we know. revisit it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a. I struggled with this for a long time. I'm sure you guys did too. Oh man, yeah, it's, it's it, a tough one. I think it, it took a, a good decade of being a personal trainer before it really sunk in for me that um, I, I can't control the decisions that um, my my family makes. So I went for the first this first phase of like recognizing that I can't change what they're going to do. But then there was a part of me that was frustrated or sad and, and disappointed. And then I I had a whole different realization, and that was that this isn't my that this isn't my life; it's their life. Mm-hmm. And you know, some people get joys out of certain things that uh, I don't see as much of a priority. I I, I think that uh, constantly getting uh, you know eating foods that are pleasurable all the time may give me instant gratification, but I see the rewards of not eating those foods all the time. Uh, and I appreciate them. Some people have never seen that or felt that or can connect with that. Therefore, they don't ever feel they want to. And who am I to judge them or tell them how to live their life? The best thing that I could possibly do is to be an example and, and allow them to see uh, the choices that I make and uh, how, how fruitful it's been for my life without really saying anything and hope that they ask the right question to allow me then to help them in that direction. Otherwise, if it's not, if they're not asking for it, it's even if it's received temporarily, uh, it's not likely they'll ever stick with it because it, of that. It just doesn't work. It just never, I've, I've almost ruined relationships. You know, I got to a point with my parents where I'd come over their house and I'd look through their pantry and take things out. Ma, why are you buying this? You know, dad, why are you doing this? And we'd have dinner. Listen, you guys eat too much of this. And I used to get on on their nerves, and it was actually starting to ruin the relationship between my parents uh, and I. Look, we can talk about this from a completely different uh, standpoint, one that I think more people will understand, right? Let's talk about religion for a second. How many people find a religion, it changes their life positively, it's like the most remarkable thing in their life, and then they come to you, and then they 
constantly. Yeah. You got to do this. You got to look at this. Read this book. What, and what ends up happening? Or do, do they do they succeed? They often push you in the yeah, opposite you, you direction. Turn them off. They and and they end up doing the opposite of what they thought. You know, I've experienced situations where I've met where I know people who have a very strong spiritual practice. They don't tell me anything. I just watch them and see how calm they are, how successful they seem to be. Wow, you seem to have like such a good sense of purpose and meaning Great relationships and with your kids. And then I'll ask, yeah. how is it that you're like this? And then they'll say, well, you know, it's my spiritual practice. And then I'll say, well, I want to know more. Now I'm open. Yeah. Now I'm open to learning and listening. It doesn't work trying to hammer into people that they got to eat right, they got to get fit, they got to do this. It just doesn't work. Now there's a flip side to that, of course. If the relationship with that person is causing you lots of issues, and I do think that fitness people have a low tolerance, you need to increase your tolerance. Not everybody sins the same way or whatever, so be a little bit more tolerant. But at some point, if you got a family member that is just doing drugs and is an alcoholic, and you're like, man, this is this is this is negative. This is hurting me. Yeah, it's damaging the family or it's you. The, right? na- then you're just gonna have to say, look, I can't hang around with you anymore. This is out of hand. I know it's your life, but now it's starting to hurt me. Right. But you got to also increase your tolerance. You can't be like, hey, you know, I don't want to hang around with you because I, I see you eat cupcakes every once in a while. Like, don't be that asshole either. <laughs> you know. But you're not gonna change anybody by by. I and listen, I'm telling you, listen, you're listening to a guy who is an excellent salesperson. I can I can get most people to see my point of view when I really, really want to. Never worked with this, yeah. with anybody in my family. It only pushed them away. Well, the, the religion so ana- I tried the shit. The religion <laughs> analogy is beautiful. It's yeah. exactly like that. It's, there's nothing more annoying than having somebody try and push their religion on you, but it's, a, it's totally different when you see something in them that you want or that you're curious about mm-hmm. and you ask them about totally. it. So the best thing that you can be is just that example and hope that they, they ask, why, man, why are you so, you always have energy in the morning and you're always yeah. so positive and you're always so happy and, oh my God, you just bend over and pick that up. And, you know, you, you got to be able to live live it and allow them to to see it to ever want to receive it. Right, right. And then eventually what happens is someone said, and this has happened to me too, is that after I did that, people come up to me and say, hey, uh, can you help me with my diet a little bit? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, do you think you could help me with a workout? I'm having a little bit... Absolutely. They never would have come to me if I would just continued hammering them. In fact, they would have been like, screw that. I'm not asking that asshole who <laughs> keeps beating me up. Because I don't want to be, uh, yeah, that's, be like that. That's a good point to bring up, too, because I've dealt with this quite a bit and tried to apply the whole like uh, modeling aspect of it, especially with my parents and, and seeing if it at all would influence the way that they would eat and whatnot. And it's not been working, you know, and it's <laughs> it's been really frustrating. And but, you know, there are those little moments where they'll be like, you know what, like, uh, I, I was curious, like, how to lower my inflammation and, like, the doctor said this or that. I'm like, oh, that's a window. And you don't, you don't want to overwhelm them with stuff. You just want to address that one question, give them really good information, yes. and so it feels valuable to them, and then back off. And then that that leaves more steps for them to take yeah, you towards gotta, you. you got to be humble, too, and graceful with that. Like, yeah. You don't want to – I did this once where – You someone, don't want to throttle all the way oh, in, Oh, dude, dude I, they come to me like, hey, Sal, I think I'd like – oh, man, I've been telling you for like the last <laughs> yeah. couple of Now you come to me. And I, oh, <laughs> should I just ruin that moment, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Next question is from Teeny Tangy. Are there any lessons you have had to learn twice? Oh shit! Ooh. Uh, Personal uh, working out. I think. I think. Oh, working out. I learned uh, I, every lesson fifteen times. Yeah, before. yeah. That's, I feel like I feel like that's too. <laughs> that's easy. a gimme. I yeah. feel like that's too easy if we go the the working out. I yeah, mean, like I think, working out too hard. I think every I, lesson. I think that's why I think we have so much patience and empathy, and I think why we repeat. Uh, things over and over on this podcast is because I, I remember, and I'm sure you all remember, um, a lot of the lessons that we teach, uh, they had to be taught to myself <laughs> mm-hmm. more than once, you know, like I, I had to like change to do it and then see the results from it and then still go back to old behaviors or habits. And then again, so yeah, you know, let me think of a personal one uh, that comes to mind that I, I've had to to learn. Yeah, the workout like, ones are easy. It's yeah. like, yeah, like, well, wor- working out too hard. Uh, yeah, I've learned that one, I don't know, a thousand times, mm-hmm. you know, not doing proper mobility work. I still am learning that, that lesson. Um, diet stuff, I learn that shit all the time. It's like I'll eat something and then afterwards I have, oh, my stomach. And I'll be like, oh, well, yeah, because you ate that. Duh. And then you end up, you have to keep relearning. 
that happens a lot. And I think, I, I you know, I think the lessons I learned once were the ones that caused a huge consequence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, right. you, you know, if like texting in the car, like if I did that and then I hit a car and caused someone an injury, I could see myself learning that lesson because the consequence was so terrible, right? Mm -hmm. But it's if it's if it's not that, I don't know very many lessons I haven't had to be exposed to several times in a row. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a, a good um, a personal one. Like you know, I always talk about how your your greatest strength is your greatest weakness, right? So there's things that I tend to lean into because I know that's my strength, but then bites me in the ass many times. And like an example of that is like uh, I'm assertive. And uh, a lot of times that serves me, it serves me in business to take charge, lead, do these things. But then it, if my social awareness is is lacking that day, uh, many times I could really turn somebody off and it could kill a business deal. It could rub somebody the wrong way. And so this is a lesson that I constantly learn. Uh, it's And I, I don't think I ever, uh, or I should say I'm constantly learning. Uh, it, I'm, I don't think I've perfected it. You know, how do you, how do you know always like w this is the time I lean in hard to the assertiveness or this is the time where I back off, like always trying to refine that. So I'm constantly learning that lesson. That's gotta be a tough mm. one too, because I could see how after you had a situation where maybe you were too assertive, it's easy to defend yourself to yourself. Like, well, whatever, screw it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, yeah. That, that was their bad. You know, I should be. For many years, that's how I was. For many mm -hmm. years, it was like, uh, I'm an acquired taste. You either, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> it is what it is. If you're too weak to stay, hang, then, you know, <laughs> I, I had that attitude for sure. And, you know, and as I got older and, and wiser, I, I think, uh, and more socially aware, I think that I've learned to, to know when to, to throttle it down and when to pull it back and, so, but I, I'm still, again, it's not, a, it's not a perfected skill. It's something that I'm always trying to harness. I have a similar one to that, but it's more geared towards, uh, like I will jump into anything like that I feel super passionate about and like an idea or mm. without like completely sitting down and, and doing the, you know, the, the research, the market research, the, uh, you know, like, like playing, like drawing it all out in terms of like, you know, the mind map and the, and the business plan and all this kind of stuff, uh, which to me, I felt has been a superpower because it's been able to allow me to make connections with people I wouldn't have before and learn these lessons that I can, um, you, you know, build off of. And but the the problem is is that mentality persists, which then I get myself back in a hole because I jumped in before really, uh, you know, doing my due diligence of of research and really like understanding what I was in for. So it's really, to me, it's more of a calculated risk. And so I, I like learning that lesson like over and over instead of just jumping in with the risk because i'm willing to take the risk is to be a little bit more measured in that but still you know find that balance of like i can still figure this out like as i'm in there but just do a better job of actually like looking into it first i de that just reminded me of something that a lesson that i've learned um it was uh choosing partners i've done a lot of business ventures and many of them i've had partners and failed uh, more than once, right? So I made made the wrong decision uh, more than once, uh, enough to where I probably thought, oh, I should just never have partners ever again. Yet here I am in uh, a four way partnership, right? Never, never even had sexy, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But wow. you know, sexy. I think that in the past, uh, I tend I tended to lean towards uh, just either one a friend or somebody I felt really comfortable with. Or uh, somebody who I think was was had similar characteristics as I did, and I really think that what makes this work is that um, the things that we have in common are our core values, which I think that's our foundation and that's important. But then we couldn't be more different as far as our strengths and business, and that's why it works so well. And I think. I, I didn't learn that. I wouldn't have learned that had I not had multiple partnerships fail and not work in the past to come to this place to recognize that, you know, understand that everybody in this in this partnership uh, plays a, a significant role. And uh, I, I could never do Justin. I could never do Sal. I could never do Doug. And that's a good thing. It's a, and, and because we have uh, similar values, uh, that we always fall back on. That's the core foundation and the partnership. That a lot of that stuff wasn't taken into consideration in my twenties when I was partnering up with people. Um, that was a mistake. I think I had to learn more than once. I got one that I that I learned over and over again. That was recent. 
So, you, you know, you talk about greatest strength is your greatest weakness. I, you know, I like to call that the shadow side of a, of an attribute, right? So, you know, I have a lot of self belief, you know, self confidence. I have quite a bit of that, but the shadow side of that is arrogance, right? You can get so much self belief that it makes it hard for you to listen and hear other people. And I'm aware of this. Doesn't mean I'm good at it. it just means I'm aware of it. So I'm at the phase before I get good at it, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I had this I had this happen with uh, with my kids and with Jessica. So Jessica's always telling me that sometimes I'm not present, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm not paying attention or my mind is wandering or I'll be on my phone or whatever. And so I, you know, I, we were with the kids and we were talking about, you know, things that we do. And my daughter goes, yeah, she goes, sometimes you'll start a sentence and you won't finish it. It happens all the time. It's super annoying. And I'm like, what? And my, my son's like, oh yeah, you do that all the time. I'm like, what do you mean? You'll be like, oh wow, you guys. And then you'll look at your phone or, or trail off. And she goes, you need to work on that. My daughter says that to me. Now, Jessica has been saying that to me for a long time. I have not been listening to her because I'm like, yeah, anyway, I know, I know me, you know, I know, I know, but I don't, I don't always know me. And so it made me like, okay, I gotta, (laughs) I gotta listen more and consider that I may not be aware of something that someone else may be aware of. And I got to be able to consider that. But it was my kids. My kids were like, my daughter was like, yeah, that's a problem. She literally said to me, you need to work on that. Oh, yeah. Papa. They're brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and everybody was too. laughing at the table. And I'm like, shit. There's another <laughs> one. I, I, we were talking with the kids. And I'm like, who's got the worst temper? I'm thinking like, oh, you know, I'm not going to have the worst temper for sure. And my kids are like, oh, you easily. I'm like, holy shit. Am I that not aware of like, <laughs> that I lose <laughs> yes. my temper? Dad yells. Yeah. I'm so, like, what? I don't yell. So, learning to listen and, and consider people's um, either, you know, criticisms or complaints of me, especially people around me, uh, that's, that's a lesson that uh, I think I got to keep working on learning. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come join us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Watch us. We're just yeah. as fun. Look at us. To look at us as we are to listen to us. Also, we are on social media. You can find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And Doug, the producer, is at Mind Pump Doug. Give you a chance to, to, to walk or whatever. So he walks in front of me, and he's walking, and he's looking to the left and to the right. And then I see him kind of peek back, and I have a feeling like this. He's going to bolt. Does. He yeah. bolts. No. Yes. Boom. And then I chase him, and what do you think he's doing the whole time? Laughing. laughing he thinks it's the you. funnest thing in the world, <laughs> and he's heading right for the what? intersection. Dude, 